Hi, my name is Michael Sipos and I am the UF IFIS Collier County Sea Grant Extension Agent. And today we're going to show you how to fillet an African pompano and give you a little bit of background facts on them. The African pompano is in the same family as Jack's pompano and other trevally, which is the Corangidae family. Um, these species, to be legal, have to be 24 inches measured to the fork, which is from the snout here to this area, not the total tail. This individual, to give you uh, an idea of scale, is about 20.1 pounds and weighs, uh, uh, is, weighs about 20.1 pounds and about 34 inches to the fork. So let's get started. Uh, there's a lot of meat up in the upper head that people forget about. Um, as you can see over here. And uh, you want to really skim the back of the dorsal area all the way to the front of the head to get as much as you want because uh, these fish are very difficult to fillet but the juice is worth the squeeze. Uh, the meat is very fine. Uh, the muscle fibers, the myomeres, are very small for a fish that's uh, relatively large. So it leaves for a great texture. Um, they're not super commercially available because they're sort of hard to target. Um, the, the way you want to actually target this species is going to deeper wrecks or deeper structures uh, in the southwest Florida area. And uh, free lining, you could use live bait, you can use um, uh, jigs, vertical jigs do extremely well with them. It, it's just hard to actually target this fish um, compared to uh, the amber jack and barracuda and other pelagics in the area. So I'm going to do a little cut on the top and a little cut on the bottom. You can go either around the ribs or over the ribs. What makes them really hard to fillet is that their skin is extremely soft. Um, so it's easily cut through. The way I uh, sort of remediate this problem is either by having like a super sharp knife or going pretty quick with the motion of skinning. The world record for this fish is actually the Florida record and uh, that is 50.8 pounds or 50 pounds and 8 ounces and that was caught off of Daytona in 1990. Uh, these species are super cool because when they're small they have these long stream-like uh, fin, fins that go out and uh, the reason that they estimate that they have that is that they resemble a jellyfish which uh, deters some predators. So right now I am just skimming the backbone and peeling that fillet off. A very popular way that you can cook this fish is uh, blacking. You can grill it. Uh, I haven't tried fly or frying it yet, but it makes great sashimi. A lot of people use it for poke bowls or um, ceviche, which is one of my favorites. So this one I went through the ribs a little bit. That's a really nice fillet right there. It's hard to skin these things, like I said, because the skin is so thin. A lot of people think that they don't have scales, but their scales are very minute. And they have these hard scoots on the back of the tail, which are pretty, pretty unique to a lot of fish. Um, I like to cut the fillet in half, and it gives you a little bit easier time running your knife along that skin to make sure that you're not leaving any behind. Um, but let's, let's do the other side before I do that.
find this fish, you uh, probably have to go to a specialty fish market. They're not really commercially exploited too much. Uh, they probably often occur at bycatch. I actually spear this individual, and spearing is actually legal in uh, federal waters. It's not legal in state waters, depending where you're at in Florida. Uh, federal waters can be different distances. So in the Atlantic, it's three miles offshore, and in the Gulf of Mexico, it is nine miles offshore. If you're within those uh, distances, hook and line is the only legal method of catching this fish. They're extremely hard fighters because uh, they can go sideways and the fish is very, very wide. And when they go sideways and start pulling, uh, they're probably one of the best fighting jack species out there. have it, a filleted African pompanum, and it disposes of his carcass right over here. Here's a table with a quick little wipe. process it a little further. So like I said, it's really hard to run your knife across the whole top of the fillet and this skin is extremely soft. So you want to part the fillet in half and it gives you a little bit easier time of uh, doing so. It's also a great idea to invest in a three-stage knife sharpener, a quick little one. If you're having a lot of fish that you're filleting, I like to sharpen my knife between some fish that have a little bit thinner of skin. So uh, there you go, I've parted the fillet. Uh, if you're having a hard time uh, holding the skin, sometimes I like to put my finger a uh, hole in the skin like this, and you can run your finger through it to give you a little bit better of a handhold. So I am going to hover my knife above the skin. And yeah, I messed up on that one a little bit, but we'll see if we can get the top one better. That's a nice, clean top part of the African pompanum. They have uh, that red blood uh, bloodline in there, and that is a result of having more vascularization and myoglobin, which is a oxygen uh, binding protein that is used to help them with sustained movement. The white muscle has uh, less capillaries in there, uh, less mitochondria, a little bit larger in terms of diameter, but uh, it's more for burst movement and it uses glycolysis to, and, and, and it results in some lactic acid buildup. So there's a, a little bit of time for uh, recovery while uh, recovery is a lot less for the, the 
red muscle that has a lot of those capillaries in there. Let's do that again with this one. Once again, take that top part of the fillet, skim your knife across the top. up like this later. It's sort of easier to get it done the first time and you can get less of that red muscle. The red muscle is sort of wedged between the top hypaxial and the bottom hypaxial muscles and uh, superficial to the skin. And it has a little bit more stronger fishy flavor because it has those oils and fats that are used to, for energy. I like to trim it up to make sure that I don't have a lot of that red muscle in there. If you're using a little bit wider of a knife, sometimes it's easier to uh, skin some of these fish just because it planes through the fillet a little easier. This one has a little bit of a side to side motion. Um, so I'm going to trim up the belly meat over here. This is uh, sort of like the internal organ area. You can eat it. I, uh, I like to sort of get rid of that connective tissue. Feel for the ribs, no ribs there. Let's trim up that red. top portion. And you can see if you get close to that skin that you'll actually get a lot of that red muscle in there. Um, like I said that muscle is used by a lot of pelagic species for that sustained movement. Uh, more of a marathon rather than a sprinter while the, the white muscles for those bursts of speed when they need them the most. So let me try to get that wedge of that bloodline out there. actually in here so I'm going to cut those ribs out. Go out there, catch some African pompano today. 
Uh, you can also go to your fish markets in the area and they might have it for you for sale. Um, it's more unlikely they would have it at a Publix, but um, these are often, you know, shot by spear fishermen, commercial spear fishermen. Oftentimes they like to save them for themselves because uh, the, the, the food quality is so great on these this species. So, yeah.